there's always a nurse kind of right here ready to intervene uh, at any moment. The life of a nurse in OHSU's medical intensive care unit is exhausting. So we're constantly assessing heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen levels. We're monitoring the waveforms on the ventilator to... ICU charge nurse Erin Bonai showed us the reality that healthcare workers are facing, an ICU full of COVID patients. They lay motionless in hospital beds, hooked up to machines that are keeping them alive. These are the sickest of the sickest patients. Every single patient on this unit right now has a breathing tube. It's a scene people outside of the medical field don't often see, but it's happening in hospitals all over Oregon, says ICU nurse Julie Cleese. We don't have any space in our unit physically to put a patient. People from all over the Pacific seaboard come here to OHSU to get medical treatment from Alaska to Idaho to Montana, and not to mention the rural hospitals that rely on the doctors here and their expertise. This is the go-to place for serious medical conditions. Our physicians are just being called at every opportunity. Can you take this patient? Can you help us consult on this patient? This patient is 26 and dying. This patient is 21 and dying. This patient is a father of four and dying. You know, can you help us? Our rural partners are struggling. They're at the limit of their capabilities and that's when they turn to us and the inn is full. Nurses are taking on extra shifts and working themselves into the ground, all to help their patients almost all of whom chose not to get the vaccine. While we were there, only one patient out of 14 had been vaccinated. I don't think people have an inkling of the amount of suffering that you will experience being sick with COVID. It is extremely painful. Um, being critically ill is, um, a very traumatizing experience. It is confusing, it's scary. You're alone with strangers. You don't recognize their voices. You lose your free will um, being in the hospital. That suffering isn't just limited to the people in these hospital beds. It extends to their family. If they get to see you, whether it's on a video camera or in person, they will see you suffer greatly. Um, and it's really unnecessary. I mean, it's totally avoidable. I think that's the most heartbreaking part of it. Because it's too risky to have family members visit COVID-19 patients, in their time of death, they're often alone, save for a nurse at their bedside who becomes their family in that moment. It's a near impossible and heart-wrenching task. What can you say? I know the depth of grief that I would feel if I couldn't be with my loved one as they died. So I take the responsibility very seriously to love that person as if they were my own family member um, and provide them with a death that's dignified and honorable as much as possible in an ICU that is sterile and cold and, and forgiving. Down the hall, photos line the wall. We've blurred their faces for privacy, but the people in them are smiling. They look like family members. The man in many of them is smiling broadly. He's now nearly unresponsive in a hospital bed. And I just wish people could hear it, that if you're worried about side effects from the vaccine itself, your risks of what can happen to you or your loved one if you do not get vaccinated are astronomically higher. And the frustration around people who refuse to get the vaccine keeps growing. You know, I had to call over to the pediatric ICU one day and ask for a beanie baby to give to a 12 year old while I turned off the support and her dad died. Like, I don't wanna do that. ICU nurse Emily Williams has seen a lot. She's cared for people after a mass shooting, but she says this is another level, with people staying in the ICU for weeks or months. If this continues, other people who need medical help 
won't be getting it. It kind of feels like the world just gaslighting you, like they don't believe your experience. You see these people, you know it's preventable. Yeah. What goes through your mind? Uh, it's devastating. It's really heartbreaking knowing that people are fighting for their lives. Um, and it could have been prevented. At the end of her day, Bonai, like many of her colleagues, doesn't have much more to give. Often exhausted and defeated and sad, if I'm honest. Americans who hesitate to get the vaccine, asking our nurses and doctors to shoulder the unbelievable weight of deaths and illnesses that are preventable. This doesn't have to happen to anybody anymore. If you're able to get the vaccine, get it. The healthcare workers here are nothing short of amazing. But yeah, that is the message that we've heard over and over again, that ending up in an ICU like this or worse, it's preventable through vaccination. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News.